conquering hero. Sergeant Warrington had been working in that red yard for some time and had proven himself to be a really useful engine. The big engines were impressed with how well he ran the yard, but still hated his army attitude. Leave him alone, said Edward. He'll help to keep the trucks in order. He's becoming a pain in the buffers, the main line engines would whisper to each other. At the end of that red yard, where the buffers stand, there's a small field, and in it is the biggest horse chestnut tree you've ever seen. Every year in October, the engines would notice children hanging around the tree and collecting the nuts that fall from it. Mavis the diesel shunter had noticed this since she began working in Natford. Later at the platform, she decided to ask her driver about it. They're collecting conkers, he said. It's for a game I used to play as a lad. You tie a string to your conker and swing it at your opponent's conker. The winner is the one whose conker survived. I remember that game, joined in a porter. I had a 26er when I was a kid. A 26er? wondered Mavis. Her driver was about to explain the scoring system when Sergeant Warrington rolled up. He didn't look happy. Order! In my army days, we were never allowed to waste time with unnecessary chit-chat. What, what? We weren't wasting time. We were talking about conkers and she explained everything. Poppycock! Silly game! You'll never find an officer playing with conkers! Now back to work! Mavis knew it would be pointless to argue with him, and went back to shunting. Later, she spoke to Edward about the sergeant. Army types are not the easiest to get along with. Just give him some time. Mavis wasn't sure. The next day was a school day so no children were around the oak tree. Mavis was being refuelled. She watched as Warrington was shunting Henry's slow goods train. He had just finished shunting the brake van, and his crew had stepped out of his cab to couple this van up. They had just uncoupled Warrington when the guard appeared from the brake van. The brakes are jammed open. Can you give a hand? So Warrington's crew climbed into the brake van. While Warrington waited, but then there was trouble. A couple of truant schoolboys sneaked into the yard and climbed into Warrington's cab. They then started playing with the controls. Stop that! Or have you both in a charge for this? Suddenly, Warrington began moving forward. Mayday! Engine in distress! But it was too late. Warrington crashed through the old buffers, ran into the field and hit the conquer tree. The tree shook, and then thousands of conkers fell to the ground. A lot of them bounced off Warrington's water tank. Ow! Luckily, the boys had jumped out of the cab before the crash, so no one was hurt. Warrington was more embarrassed than hurt. Edward and Mavis helped to clear the mess, while the fat controller and the yardmaster spoke to the boys. So Topham Hat then spoke kindly to Warrington. The accident wasn't your fault. We'll make sure these boys' parents know exactly what they've been doing. I'm sending you to the works to make sure you have no damage. Army training is what those little two brats need, said Warrington to himself. Soon a strong chain was attached to Warrington, and Edward and Mavis pulled him back onto the tracks. Edward then took the sergeant to the works, while Mavis took charge of the trucks. After a few days, Warrington was repaired, and he returned to Natford. On his way back, his driver had some news for him. When you hit the tree, you made every last conker fall out of it. The children spent hours collecting them up. They must have enough to last them for until spring. At least some goods has come out of this said the sergeant, but when he arrived at the Tidmouth Sheds, the story had spread to the other engines. You'll never find an officer playing with conkers, came a voice from somewhere in the sheds. Behold, the conquering hero.